Innovation, groundbreaking, revolutionary. Whenever I think back to the 2010s, especially in regards to the world of consumer electronics, I can't help but remember these words in particular. Everything was innovation, everyone was innovation. This hoverboard, this juice machine, all exuding metric shit tons of innovation. Debates raged on on whether new devices like the tablet would replace the personal computer. Will the smartwatch become the new smartphone? Smart clothes, smart dogs, smart homes, smart frogs. Most of these big ideas in tech don't succeed. At least not to the degree of the evangelist initial claims. After all, it's a lot easier to remember the success stories that are still used today than those failures that screamed loudly, coughed a few times, and died peacefully in their sleep. Sleep. But I'll get to the point. Today, I wanted to talk about one of these failures, 3D TVs, a technology that, at one point, was relevant. 3D is a cyclical fad. It repeats every few decades. A big movie uses it, people get hyped up, production ramps up on more 3D films, and eventually the audience gets bored. Decades pass, repeat the cycle. Now, on first glance, it would seem that 3D televisions popped up in response to the massive success of James Cameron's blue people cat person space Pocahontas the movie, but that's not true. I'm not even talking about the 3D TV experiments from decades ago, either. In the late 2000s, multiple manufacturers had demos in regards to 3D displays, both with and without the glasses. Yes, the 3D craze was in full swing before Avatar even hit theaters. You could find CES demos, Sony was announcing its own plans for 3D televisions and PS3 support. You may remember this 2007 viral video that used a Wiimote as a head-mounted display. Of course, this wasn't the exact same kind of 3D, but you get the point. There was interest. The old 3D, that was crap. This new 3D won't be a fad, I promise. It will replace those lame-ass 2D televisions in the same way that we went from black and white to color. At least that's the way a lot of companies viewed all of this. Remember that in 2010, the HD craze was in full swing. Most households were finally getting their hands on big old flat screen TVs, which had dropped in price significantly. This might sound mundane, day now, but it scared the shit out of the cinemas and the very same TV manufacturers producing these sets. Cinemas were worried that the general public would quit coming once they had these fancy 1080p displays. Think about it, in the 90s, somebody would have a fat-ass tube TV with 480p. Of course you'd pick the big screen over this, but the difference in quality between that big screen and the home was shrinking. Combine this with the fact that streaming was already killing the video rental service, people could have access to any show, any movie at any time in the near future. Nobody wanted to be the next blockbuster. Cinemas needed an edge, something the home couldn't compete with, and in 3D they found this. Even if 3D TVs took off, the 3D effect scales based on screen size, and no 55-inch TV would be able to mimic this experience. Also, they could charge more. It was a win-win. Now, those TV manufacturers actually had somewhat similar concerns. If everybody had a big HD flat screen, why would they ever care to buy another TV again? 4K and OLED weren't really on the table right now, and even if they were, it wouldn't be guaranteed that the public would care about higher than high definition resolution and better colors and contrast. There was no telling that the public would care about these technical terms. And if that were the case, the television would become like the toaster. No need to upgrade every few years, just keep the one you have until it breaks. With 3D though, that's easier to sell. It's like Avatar, but in your home. How novel. Of course we know theaters were quite successful with their moves. Almost every film from the early 2010s and even beyond was in 3D. You could charge more for tickets and people were still hyped and wanted that Pandora experience again. Problem was quality control. Avatar was something of a tech demo. It was filmed in 3D, designed around that experience. That's expensive, and most studios don't want to commit to the expense, but they sure want those profits. So almost every major blockbuster would be filmed in 2D and in post converted to 3D. Sometimes this was fine, sometimes it was fucking disgusting, but it was always worse than just filming in 3D. Now when it comes to televisions, this meant you had a hearty 
pretty mix of decent and okay and garbage 3D films. There was no sign of this slowing down, and a few early adopters were convinced to buy up these sets. But they were pretty pricey. I'm talking four, five, nine thousand dollars for one of these bad boys. So there's some content there, but there's other issues. There's two kinds of popular 3D TVs, active and passive. They have other names, but let's just stick to this for simplicity. Passive 3D was exactly like you'd see it in a movie theater. Half the lines of an image go to one eye, half to the other, the brain combines them, you get 3D. These glasses are light, they're disposable and cheap, you've been to a movie before, you know how it works. But what this means is since half the image is devoted to one eye, the apparent resolution drops in half. Imagine paying almost 10 grand for a new TV, breaking out Alvin and the Chipmunk 7, and getting a similar visual quality to an old tube set. It was a tough compromise, but the other kind of 3D, it solved this for a price. In active 3D, the resolution remains at 1080. The glasses themselves are flickering, syncing up with the TV and every other frame, and your brain combines the images, you get 3D. However, this meant that the glasses had actual mechanical functions. They needed to be charged, they were heavier, and you had to sync them up to the TV itself. You couldn't have a friend bring over their LG 3D glasses and watch your Sony set, and that pissed people off. Also, they cost like 70 bucks a piece. It didn't help that this flickering effect could cause headaches, especially if you were more perceptive to fast-moving images. So now you're paying 10 grand for a new TV, breaking out Alvin and the Chipmunks 8, and you're rewarded with pain. Now, both of these TVs had the issue of limited viewing angle. The 3D effect breaks if you're not sitting directly in front of the set, so you might have to rearrange your living room just so everybody can watch the movie. Regardless, the 3D hype had not died down. It was expected that within a few years, 3D TVs would no longer need these stupid glasses. After all, we're already seeing the sharp display, stereoscopic images and parallax barriers, 3D phones, the 3DS, and people believe this actually could happen, that 3D could become the new standard. Production studios were getting ready for this. ESPN, BBC had 3D channels all set up. You'd see various sporting events and shows that were getting 3D just to be ahead of the curve. Industry analysts were predicting that within the next few years, this 3D TV market would explode, and right now it was just a waiting game. Sony would offer quite a library of 3D-capable titles on the PS3, like a lot more than you probably expect. They went as far as releasing the PlayStation 3D display. The selling point of this that it wasn't just 3D gaming, it had the multi-view feature, a concept that was popular and some demos. Two people could look at a TV and both could see a different image. So if you're playing a split-screen game, you get the whole screen, or you could you could watch a different show than the other person and both put on headphones because the sound's just clashing. A lot of people that bought these 3D televisions had less than glowing sentiments toward the technology. They would get the set, watch a few movies, play a few games, and give up. Maybe the resolution cut was too steep, the viewing angle annoying, charging the glasses. Any of those issues could be at play. I mean, content, most of it was still in 2D, so that's an issue. But for a lot, it wasn't any of these factors. The 3D effect to them was just a novelty, and while it was fun for a, a, a little bit, it became annoying and headache-inducing. This was best represented by how major networks saw low viewership on 3D programming. Even if a lot of people were buying these TVs, at one point, they weren't using the feature. By 2013, the writing was on the wall. These networks had shut down, and at CES, it was no longer the 3D TV that got the most attention. It was 4K. Yeah, the average price of 4K televisions had dropped significantly by 2013. It was actually in a price range people could afford. Content was easier to produce in 4K rather than in 3D, and people were interested. If 3D television was invented to solve the issue of what's next after 1080p, it turned out just bumping up that resolution was more than enough for the general public. To television manufacturers, it made a lot more sense to invest in 4K and 
OLED than in 3D. By 2014, Vizio announced that it was done making 3D TVs and it would return once they got rid of those pesky glasses. Streaming services were adopting 4K while phasing out 3D content. By 2015, the 4K Blu-ray standard was announced and it didn't include 3D. By 2016, the PS4 Pro heavily marketed its 4K upscaling abilities and by early 2017, LG and Sony bowed out. 3D TVs were dead. I mean, mostly. You can still buy a few Blu-rays, a 3D movie Blu-rays, but it seems pretty unlikely that somebody is still using one of these sets that they paid so much money for 10 years ago and didn't feel the need to upgrade since then. But it all makes you wonder, what about those glasses list displays? We were told that they would become the new standard, solving so many issues with 3D TVs. Well, they existed. In fact, they've been shown off for a long time. Go back to 2013 or so and you find countless CES demos of these massive heavy displays that allowed for multiple users to see 3D without the glasses from seemingly any viewing angle. Remember though, this is 2013 and 3D is kind of on the way out. All of these demos and the demos that would follow would mostly be attempts to measure the public's interest in the technology, but people just didn't care. The tragic part is that with the glasses, you could have taken a 4K display, had a passive system of 3D, and it looked fine. AI could take 2D content, convert it to 3D, and it looked, apparently, pretty good. But nobody was demanding this. And you know, this isn't too surprising when you consider what ended up being the most successful 3D-capable device of all time. Of course, that 3DS. Now, I always enjoyed the feature. I felt it made the games easier to see where you're jumping and it adds immersion, but many users complained about headaches, the limited viewing angle, and they simply turned it off. Fairly quickly, by the time the 3D craze was dying off, the 2DS released, and this greatly increased sales numbers. With the next model of the 3DS, Nintendo addressed that viewing angle issue with eye tracking, but even still, it wasn't like some unanimously adored feature. Eventually, new games barely used the 3D at all, and of course, Nintendo didn't care to include 3D functionality in the Switch. This was a device that millions of people had. Content was explicitly designed for 3D use, no glasses required. It was the perfect test bed for 3D's potential, and people still didn't use it. I don't think the technology failed because it wasn't ready. I don't think the technical hurdles were just too big to ask of people. I think they just didn't like 3D. Of course, VR has replaced the need for any 3D TV set. It does all the same things and more. I could go on some very long-winded rant on why this works and this doesn't, but eh you probably get the point. I don't know if the 3D TV will ever come back, but this isn't about predictions. I just wanted to look back at this failed technology. There it is. Look at it. No glasses required.